Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you are all enjoying the 2022 APSI seminar, which I know will be full of very insightful presentations from across the sector. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Sharon Hodgson, the Member of Parliament for Washington and Sunderland West. I'm also Chair of the All Party Parliamentary Group on School Food, which is what brings me here today. The APBG is very fortunate to work with the wonderful Vicky Hacking from APSI, who provides the Secretariat to the group. And the APBG is made up of parliamentarians from all parties, charities, local authorities, food distributors, caterers and many, many more. And whether it's breakfast clubs, school lunches or provision during the school holidays, the APBG is determined in our campaign to keep the pressure on government to ensure that every child in the UK has access to good quality food at school lunch times. I'm so sorry I can't be with you in person today, but I know you are all in great company with my colleague Christine Wakevet, who since becoming an MP in 2019 has been a great parliamentary advocate for combating food insecurity and ensuring the provision of high quality meals in and outside of school. This is a really important time for school food. Coming out of the pandemic at last, thankfully, and we are also about to hear the government's response to Henry Dimbleby's National Food Strategy Review, something that will shape how the food system works in our country for decades. This is just around the corner, but there is a lot of lobbying to be done in that time, and I'll come back to this in a minute. But I really want to take a moment now to dedicate a huge thank you to our public sector catering services and all of the staff who make the provision of school food possible. It has been a very long two years since the start of the pandemic. And in that time, school food has come up time and time again as an issue in the national media and in Parliament. And each time that has been met by an outpouring of support for school food and the work done by caterers and school food staff. Working in unforeseen circumstances, caterers across the country ensured that children, young people and families got the support they needed. In return, the government must now show catering and school staff the support they need. As mentioned, what is coming up politically is quite a galvanising time, but also a crucial time to lobby for real change. Across the past few years, as household budgets have grown tighter, the gaps in school food provision have been widening. And the burden of these gaps in provision is often resting on school and catering staff and the schools themselves who might have to be subsidising parents who cannot pay. And this is just not sustainable. The goal of all working in school food is to ensure more diners on seats being provided with a healthy, nutritious meal. While there is lots to be proud of in the way school food works in the UK, there is much work to be done and the government must listen to the sector as it raises the alarm. The white paper response is even more vital as those gaps in school food provision risk growing further. The perfect storm is coming for families across the UK as we approach the new tax year, where families are going to be hit with skyrocketing energy bills and a hike in national insurance matched by the ever increasing price of the weekly shop. The cut to universal credit and in many areas a rise in the council tax bill. This really complex situation will mean that many more families will be facing strains on the household budgets and will risk falling into food insecurity. And I'm sure all of you here today will know all too well that hungry children cannot learn. But this simple phrase is becoming an extremely complex reality for far too many children and young people across the country. It brings into sharp focus just how important getting a balanced meal during the day at school can be for so many children. Children from disadvantaged backgrounds already face significant nutrition based health inequalities, leading to both hunger, but also obesity. The pandemic has made these health inequalities worse, and in time this will lead to poorer life expectancy and higher morbidity rates. A baby born in Gateshead already has a life expectancy 15 years lower than a baby born in Grantham. And the lasting impact of the coming food insecurity crisis on the public health of areas with high deprivation 
could cause inequality for generations. And it should be government policy which puts these wrongs right, not the generosity, albeit plentiful and welcome, of catering providers. However, the burden of helping children escape food insecurity shouldn't have to fall on your shoulders. In the Leveling Up White Paper, the government appears to have recognised the important role schools play in combating food insecurity. And the White Paper has positively listened to school food organisations, head teachers and pupils who've emphasised the importance of monitoring school food against mandatory standards. And it says that schools will have to pu publish a whole school food approach and that this will be piloted by the Food Standards Agency. And it commits to giving support to governors to make this a reality. So these commitments are also to be joined by better support for food teachers for food education, something desperately needed, as new statistics show that we are only meeting 25% of the target needed for new teachers training in food education for 2022. And while the White Paper's commitment to the Community Eat Well programme enables GPs to prescribe exercise and healthy food, the white paper is marked by a lack of progress in the government's obesity strategy and its commitment to tackling junk food advertising. And really big aspects of food insecurity in and outside of school still need addressing. Things like holiday hunger will no doubt need serious attention later this year as we approach the summer holidays, as the cost of living crisis really takes hold. I'm hopeful that the government's response to the national food strategy lifts the weight off our minds and takes action on these important issues. But the main focus of the national food strategy relating to school meals is in the offer of free school meals, which as it stands is inadequate. Many children and young people experiencing poverty remain unable to access free school meals as family budgets become increasingly stretched and as more children fall into poverty. Research carried out by Child Poverty Action Group, Children North East and the North East Child Poverty Commission found that one in four school age pupils in poverty are not currently eligible under the narrow threshold of household income of 7,400 for free school meals, despite transitional protections and universal infant free school meals. So that's one in four children who are not who are in poverty but not eligible for a free school meal. The free school meals eligibility threshold therefore urgently needs attention from the government to ensure that all children experience poverty receive one hot, healthy and balanced meal each school day. At the same time, around 150,000 children and young people across the country with what's called no recourse to public funds live below the poverty line but remain ineligible for free school meals because of their family's immigration status. The government must right these wrongs by putting into action the recommendations made by Henry Dimbleby's National Food Strategy Review. The will behind the agenda to level up the country can only succeed if health inequalities across the nation are resolved and the nutrition of children and young people from disadvantaged backgrounds be future proofed. The next few months are therefore really critical and no doubt school food will be hitting the headlines again, hopefully though because of the positive steps being taken to ensure the food security of our children and young people. With experts and campaigners, some of whom are here with us today, we can keep the pressure on the government to really make a change to people's lives. I look forward to working with many of you on these vitally important issues. And in the meantime, I hope you all enjoy this special celebration of the public services that keep our great country moving. Thank you. <laughs>